The Cro-Magnon Race If we are to take the evolutionist theory, the human being went through several stages in order to become what we are today. Each stage brought a significant transformation, like the vertical position given by a straight back spine or a larger and more developed brain. One of these stages included the Cro-Magnon or the first human beings that are considered to be modern, closest to what we Europeans are in present days. If you read scientific literature about this type of human beings, you will find them named as European early modern humans and not the Cro-Magnon humans, the latest not having a formal taxonomic stature, therefore not indicating towards a particular species as the establishment sees it. When did the Cro-Magnon man live? There were quite a few remains that were determined to belong to the Cro-Magnon, the earliest of them, date back 43-45 thousand years from our present days. The remains were discovered in sites located in Britain and Italy, and the dating was made by using the famous radiocarbon method. Ever since the first remains of the Cro-Magnon were found, scientists wanted to rebuild this being, to see how it looks. It was discovered, based on the found bone fragments, that the Cro-Magnon was quite tall, in comparison with our other ancestor, and with a robust and powerful body. This man has a compact structure, made to give him resilience with the help of strong muscles that covered the entire body. The face also started to resemble ours very much, with a straight forehead and more discreet brow ridges. If we are to think about the Neanderthals and their sloppy forehead, we can say that evolution was getting it right with the Cro-Magnon man. The face was shorter, finer, being wider than elongated. The chin is now nicely shaped and visible. But, what is more important, the brain capacity of the Cro-Magnon is significantly higher than the average of all the other so-called modern human beings. So, after years of evolution, we were finally becoming smarter and more adapted to our living conditions. If Cro-Magnon is not the official name of this modern species of human beings, how did it appear? The name comes from the location where the first specimen of Cro-Magnon was found. The place is located in the southwest of France, in a small commune called Les Ys de Tiaxirie. Here, at the Aubry de Cro-Magnon location, in a cave, the first remaining of this ancient human being specimen was discovered. In French, Aubry means rock shelter, while Cro means cavity or hole, in the Occitan language. Finally, Magnon comes from the name of the landowner, where the rock shelter was discovered. So, from the need to name this being after it was discovered, the name Cro-Magnon was given, a name that ended up being widely used when talking about the early human beings. It is important to note that the Cro-Magnon man belongs to the Homo sapiens sapiens group, which is the group of our closest ancestors, the first representatives of the modern man. Practically, Cro-Magnons are the oldest human beings in Europe, being the direct ancestors of modern Europeans. The Cro-Magnons are believed to come from Scandinavia, approximately 50,000 years ago, evidence pointing out that the first human beings that were modern from an anatomical point of view came from there, and migrated throughout the world. It is believed that a significant group migration of these modern humans that covered the Arabian Peninsula, which happened about 50,000 years ago, introduced the first modern humans to the Eurasian region. Here, a group got established around the Indian Ocean, on coastal lines, while another group migrated north, where they created settlements in Central Asia. What is impressive about Cro-Magnons is the fact that they resemble us in a very large degree. They were quite tall, an estimate height believing to be around 176.2 cm or 5 feet 913 inches. Of course, they were more robust from a physical point of view, physical labor and covering large distances being common aspects of life back in those days. They even had a cranial capacity that was slightly larger, an important aspect that helped them survive in various conditions, helping them make the best choices for them and their group. Also, it was determined that their vocal apparatus was just like the one we all have today, which means that the Cro-Magnons were able to speak, verbal communication being a regular part of their lives. They also had quite a rich culture, flint tools, and other objects being found in the same places where the bone remains of Cro-Magnons were discovered. In fact, 
various Venus figurines, which were carved out of animal bones or antlers, ornaments, and the cave paintings, are all representative for the Cro-Magnon culture. So, besides making tools for their utilitarian purposes, the Cro-Magnons showed interest for arts and beautification of their living spaces. Because of their strong physique and hunting tools found in their caves, it is believed that Cro-Magnons were efficient hunters, focusing on hunting large game, like cave bears, mammoths, reindeer, and horses. They used javelins, spears and spear throwers to hunt and kill their prey. Due to this lifestyle, they were nomadic or at least semi-nomadic, following their prey wherever it went. They also used flax fibers to craft baskets, sewed garments, and for holding their stone tools. So, we can say that they were quite organized, having in mind other aspects of life than sleeping, hunting, and eating. In Europe, there are quite a few caves where the remains of Cro-Magnon were found, together with evidence of their settlement in the area. The Grotta del Cavallo in Italy, Peter Cuoase, the Bone Cave, and Peter Amuir Isler, the Women's Cave, both located in Romania, Kent's Cavern, and Red Lady of Paviland, both found in the United Kingdom, are all representative caves where significant evidences of the Cro-Magnon were found, which helped the scientific world understand this primitive modern man much better. The story of evolution starts in Africa. 130,000 years ago. Then, there was just one human race, Negro. These were not Cro-Magnon. A tribe of these Negroes left Africa 130,000 years ago, other tribes remained, they migrated to Scandinavia. Tens of thousands of years later than this first migration out of Africa another tribe broke off and headed east to South India and then that tribe split and some headed to Far East Asia some on to Australia. 50,000 years ago new races had evolved in these new environments. That is 80,000 years of evolutionary time from the original Negroes to the new races. In Scandinavia, Cro-Magnons had evolved. In South India, Dravidians had evolved. In Far East Asia, Mongoloids had evolved. In Australia, Aboriginals had evolved. The Scandinavian race descended into Europe from the north to get away from the descending Ice Age. They also moved into Asia and mixed with the South Indians which formed the Arabs. They moved into Far East Asia and mixed with the Mongoloids which formed the Orientals. These new hybrid people, Arabs, and Orientals moved back west, Arabs into North Africa and then up into Greece, Italy, and Spain, mixing with more Cro-Magnons already there. Orientals went into Eurasia mixing with Cro-Magnons to form the Slavic peoples. Anyway 50,000 years ago there were five root races of man. Cro-Magnon. Dravidian South Indian. Mongoloid. Aboriginal. Negro. Thank you for listening.